Welcome to episode 10, can't believe we made it, of the Global Exclusive Podcast. I'm your host, Hazard. Joining me this week is Baros. Oh shit, wait, wait, wait. I had a good one. Hold on. No, 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 but this is for real, okay? I actually want to do a good one. What was it I was supposed to say? Jesus, I should have written down. This oh, okay, okay. I remember. Now. Sorry. No, ha- Hazard, just, just say me now. <laughs> <laughs> Must fill. We're professionals. <laughs> Shadow Walker. Uh, so New Zealand and Australia, right? Yeah, this week uh, our sponsor is apparently Daylight Savings Time, <laughs> as it is the cause of Cotton Sea and uh, Dream Blitz not showing up on time, and we are starting without them. <laughs> or maybe it's the Koala Uprising, who knows. But this, we've got an exciting episode this week, one of my favorite games from my childhood, Final Fantasy IX. We've got that banner, we've got Latents, or possibly not Latents, Ico and Beatrix, and then we've also, we're going to talk about what this April collaboration might be. And uh, we may have some time to talk about some of the early game mechanics and how those things have changed with uh, with increased abilities and, and how that's affected those trials. And let's get started. Wait, wait, wait. Aiko, right? Aiko. It's no. Aiko. Aiko. No. No, come on. Listen, <laughs> I, as a kid, I pronounced it Eco, which is clearly wrong. It's definitely Aiko. Look, okay. Barros, we're Americans. We invented English. Definitely <laughs> Americans invented English. So we have to decide how it's pronounced. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess you are right. I, I guess I'll just have to back off here. <laughs> he comes from a game that nobody cares about. Jesus, Shadow. Both Ico and Beatrix got Latents uh, announced this last week. <laughs> Steiner can just go fuck himself. Also, I hate him. yeah, it, we need we need at least thirty percent or something. Goonie Spy, if you're listening to the podcast, I really hope you do. I love you. Sponsor us. We we got I, it, boys. I am the ratings. Oh man, that was good. So, so before we get started with the actual unit, so does anyone else also think that Steiner is just a piece of shit? He is my least favorite uh, character in Final Fantasy so, IX. Recently, I was on our Final Fantasy, and they were talking about FF9, and I think it was our games or something, and everyone was like, oh, that they love Steiner. It's like the best comedy really? relief. But I found him so annoying throughout my whole yeah. playthrough. I don't understand why people like him. I, I never played either. 9, but it's amazing to me how divisive Final Fantasy is. Like, I feel like for most other series... Most people will generally have some agreement on what the best and worst games in this series are, but with Final Fantasy, there's nothing even close to resembling that. It's kind of all over the board. You, you definitely hear six a lot. You hear tactics a lot. Um, I've heard four, five, seven, nine, ten, all you know, all all listed as the best Final Fantasy. So, I mean, I think it's a testament that they've made several good games. That's off, uh, awesome. Obviously, has kept us here in FFBE for, for the nostalgia it has continued. Yeah, yeah, but the games are also kind of wildly, di- or not wildly different, but they are different enough to speak to different people. It's not like Resident Evil that basically did the same formula for four games in a row, but it's more, um, yeah, it's like some people might actually like Final Fantasy VII for some reason, because it speaks to them. <laughs> Apparently enough people did that they're now remaking it, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's such a weird Japanese trend, like I still don't get that trend, because it's happening so much with video games in general. That, or from from Japan, where they're just choosing or opting to remake, but, but not like remaster, but re re remake like from scratch a game that already was released. I have a conspiracy theory about that. Well, not a conspiracy theory, but just a theory about that. I don't know if it's suitable for this podcast, but I mean, listen. Now, now you got to say it. So <laughs> now I got to say it. Well, okay. So ever since I think like '90s is when like video games peaked for Japan, and ever since the 2000s, we've seen I think the Shenmue is like probably like the last good one, and it's like. There has been there hasn't been any new franchises from Japanese developers for a long time. Like we're always seeing the same shit. Like Persona, like Final Fantasy, it's always the same tried and true franchise. Like Nintendo, for example, never made a new thing for a long time. So to me, it just feels like there's a lot of stagnation within Japanese developers after a change of generation. And that's true with the Final Fantasy series, because like the last good FF game we've had, it's it's very divisive, but many would say like FF ten was probably the last like um good one that everyone enjoyed. Everything afterwards is like very divisive, including the MMO, and that could be true for a lot of the recent um, other JRPGs. So it, it just feels like there's been a stagnation after a change of pace, and I've, and like the FF7 remake is another one of that. Like FF7 remake is headed by Nomura Tetsuya Nomura, who I I think is a whack job. So 
That's just my <laughs> so, take. I, I think you're right, but I think so. So I don't fully agree because there has been some innovation. Like for instance, all the Dark Soul games and and the uh, Bloodborne, uh, uh, Bloodborne as well. So. Yeah. from soft basically like mm-hmm. that's a lot of innovation g- g- great games i love them to death but i think you're onto something when it comes to these large um large development studios from yeah japan like you're looking at square enix you're looking at nintendo all of them not that much innovation to be honest i think you're on something yeah i think with hideo kojima's like hideo, when hideo kojima left konami i think that was a very big like uh a sign to what the industry is there it's like he didn't have the creative freedom to do what he wants for some reason for the corporate structure or whatever culture that- I, I made this comment a, a couple episodes ago that i thought that you know it's it's kind of lazy design as far as from an innovative standpoint i think you're right shadow that they haven't really done as much innovation i mean even that's a testament to ffbe and even more the visions are both basically remakes of the classics um that that preceded them right War of the Visions for Final Fantasy Tactics and FFBE for many of the early numbered series. But it doesn't, that doesn't mean, even though I think it's kind of intellectually lazy, some people took issue with that statement, that doesn't mean that the execution can't be creative, can't be done really, really well. So with like the Final Fantasy VII remake, even though I think it's a lazy idea to just remake the same game, that doesn't mean that they can't do it in a very good way and make it an excellent product. No, but no, think, they can. Like, just look at the Resident Evil games, the Resident Evil 2 and 3, excellently remade. Yeah, no, I think they could do it really, really well. So I'm not saying that they shouldn't be doing that, but I do see a dearth of new ideas in the gaming industry from a lot of these big companies. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Triple A gaming has probably just died. Well, at least, like, from these big corporations in Japan, it definitely is not as innovative as maybe we would have remembered it from our childhood. Mm-hmm. If we want to lead into Final Fantasy IX, actually, Final Fantasy IX was designed to be a throwback game to, you know, as a, as a testament or as a, how do you say, as uh, as an homage. How did you pronounce it, Baros, a few weeks ago? Homage. Homage. Yeah, I said homage, but I mean, again, I did not invent the English, so who the fuck that, knows? That's, that's actually correct. Baros is right this one time. Ah, there we go. <laughs> It has to happen sometime. <laughs> As a nod to the earlier Final Fantasy games and, and art design and the play style was very specifically designed as kind of a throwback. And that's something that I really enjoyed. I wasn't so much into the steampunk kind of style of 6, 7, and even part of 8. Um, so I really enjoyed the game as a kid. It very much spoke to me as a kid. Now looking back as an adult, I can understand why an adult wouldn't enjoy it as much as I did when I was 10 or 10. But I think it's a really, really well done game. The music is incredible. Some of his greatest work. It's super, super eclectic. If you guys listen to that soundtrack, there's some really, really bizarre um, changes of style in, in that in that OST. Wow, so you're a proper Final Fantasy IX nerd. Nice. And I think I just want to add that um, Final Fantasy IX was Sakaguchi's last Final Fantasy before he left or stopped working on Final Fantasy. So I think I agree. I, I loved Final Fantasy IX was the first Final Fantasy that I played. And um, I, I really enjoyed. Obviously, I'm still playing the series right now, thanks to it. So I have a soft spot for FF9 as well. It's, and I recently replayed it after getting it on Steam, and and it was just as charming. It was still there was a, there's an exclusive charm to FF9 that isn't anywhere to be seen in the other games. So yeah. I played FF9 two minutes before the podcast started. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you're right. The Shadow is it's a very very unique game, and it is a divisive game even among Final Fantasy fans love the art style and play style or you hate it but i would say if you're if you're looking to try it for the first time i think getting it on steam or even um, on a phone app the phone app does a really really good job of allowing you to skip some of the more grindy and annoying mechanics and just enjoy the storyline yeah it also has these cheats right you can use right that's what i'm saying is you can master mm-hmm. different skills or you can level up or do certain amounts of damage that you want to try and avoid the, some of the grinding and be able to really enjoy what they've done with the story. Yeah, kind of like if you just want to blaze through the story. It's the same thing they did with FF8. And I actually think it's a great direction in that sense. Like, oh, you're nostalgic? You want to feel the story? One of the weakest points about FF9 that people kept talking about is this is a stupid loading screen when you go into battle. It takes like an extra two or three seconds to like swoop around the whole, the whole battlefield or something. Yep. But if you speed up the game, you can actually speed up the whole uh, grinding process of it, which I really enjoy. So... And you know, now we've talked about uh, the game itself. We can talk about there's there's three units on the banner that came out. There's Rakish Thief Zidane, there is Dragon Knight Freya, and Black Mage Vivi. 
and there's also the free unit Quina came out. Uh, so they all have very interesting kits. So uh, we can start with Zidane. Yeah, so Radish Thief Zidane is, turns out, a very decent unit. Mostly because I pulled him on a daily ticket. Or not a daily ticket, a daily pull. And I know must pull, like, don't hit me. I wasn't supposed to do dailies, but I am. I'm sorry. Um, and the thing I like about Zidane is that... So we're going to talk about the Beatrix uh, latent and the controversy around that. But when we were talking about that, a lot of people were upset about Zidane and about the global exclusive buffs that the entire cast of F9 got. But when I actually looked at this kit, this is an amazing unit. Like you have a top tier single target and AOE chainer. If you have some decent gear, you throw some STMRs on there, he's going to do just as well as Madam and Bradley. And with the addition that his AOE chains are actually really strong too, has his own strong in peril, and most importantly, while AOE chaining, he can also give your party an AOE Mirage, which is also excellent for future trials. So in my mind, this is actually a top tier unit and has a decent sprite too. So Hazard, obviously, you're the nerd. What do you think? So I, I do appreciate that they removed... In JP, they had a passive cover, a 5% chance to cover female characters, which I don't know what Alan was thinking, but honestly, that should, never should have been in the game in the first place. And I'm glad that could move it. Uh, he yeah, also but it's got, literally the first skill he learns in the actual game. <laughs> right, but in this game, it will actually wipe you. In that game, it yeah. wouldn't. Um, but he also got a duration to extend it to 10 turns for unlocking triple casts and unlocking some modifiers on his limit burst um so that was nice but he didn't get any actual dps increase and neither did v or freya none of them got actual damage increases so i think if if the fma banner hadn't come out last week zidane would have been much more of a desirable unit but the fact of the matter is that edward basically is better than zidane in every way now, he can chain with Edward, which is nice. If, if you've got a Zidane, he can chain really, really well with Edward. They're both triple SR chains. That's nice, and they both have wind. Um, but yeah, I think I think a lot of the hype was killed by the fact that the FMA banner was released the week before. And I thought, for that reason, they would actually buff these units to help keep up with the meta. But he still does, as you said, kind of around Bradley and Adele damage. And he scales much, much better if you've got an STMR dagger, like his own dagger, or um, MM Zon's STMR. I think the problem is that it's not just the Full Metal Alchemist banner, it's also Shuan that causes problems. Because the, the damage of Shuan and Zidane Okay, he just is won't similar, shut up about Shuan, just saying. <laughs> except that, and they both have AoE Mirage, except that Shuan isn't stuck with one element. Uh, they also have Fire, and they have the Ridiculous Survivor build. So Zidane got, got his legs cut out from under him a few months, a couple months before he came out. And they just didn't do enough to make him relevant. Yeah, uh, true. I, I, I kind of would have preferred him to be released at the same time as just Shuen because it would have given you a different option with around the same DPS. Um, I, I think the Mirage, being able to chain while doing a stack of Mirage and cool down two stacks of Mirage is really, really nice still. I mean, <clears throat> uh, the other thing that Zidane has going for him is he's very, very easy to hit 100% evasion with. He's got innate. And if you've got some nice, uh, some nice gear for it, you can hit that pretty easy without um, getting rid of any of your DPS. But I think where Zidane really struggles is, as you said, single element for the most part. He's kind of stuck to win because he has to use his LB to double cast. Um, he doesn't have any ailment immunity except for charm and stop, which those are nice, but it'd be nice to have something else. And his stats are overall just kind of meh. His stats are really weird that he has a 50... Um, you know, like you can do pots for 50 attack instead of the usual 65, which is kind of a weird choice. Yeah, we've been getting a few units lately that have lower than normal base stats, which isn't, it's not crippling, but it's a little annoying. A lot of those units just end up being slightly, un, slightly below par. Hmm. But let's just put it into perspective. So looking at the damage output that Zidane, can, he does roughly cipher amounts of damage cipher is the dude from ff8 that's gonna get rid of the ff8 mk now cipher can actually do the very latest trial uh the behemoth kai trial in jp uh, under the turn limit and zidane is almost up there zidane also has a lot of passive evasion making him very easy to gear and even if he can't beat that trial by the turn limit it means that he is excellent for all upcoming trials for what the next nine months so still, I, I want to take a step back and say this is an amazing unit and it's also going to make your team building easier if you need to spam Mirage without forcing it into your team. Um, but the other thing about 
Zidane, Zidane is that like you mentioned that he's similar to Cipher, but I'm looking at the damage sheet right now, and Zidane's at 22 billion, while Cipher's like at 32. So, huh? But JP, the JP DPS sheet had. But that's a whale gear. Yeah, yeah but, but listen, listen. Who is gearing units with TMRs? Come on. Okay, but like, I just want to say that that um, Zidane isn't a bad unit. Is he's just another one of those meh units we've always talked about in the last like month or two. He's yeah. he's another onion knight. He's another madam eetle. Like you don't really need this guy. <clears throat> And the bigger problem is that he's on a banner with two other damage dealers that are also similarly mediocre. I mean, they're not bad. None of them are bad, but none of them are unique. Vivi is bad. I want to. Okay, so are we... can we move on to Vivi then? I'll talk about Vivi. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, so Vivi has two different rotations you could go for him, and it depends. Like the Vivi has Vivi does have a chain of rotation, but the issue with Vivi's chain of rotation is not not only his low as modal modifiers, but also he doesn't have any imperils that beyond 75% for each of the elements he has. Or 80% rather, I think it's 80 So his chain of rotation is kind of bad. But then he also has a really interesting finisher rotation with Doomsday. So Doomsday is a black magic move that does single... Okay, this is weird. It does damage to both your enemy and your own team. And it's a dark damage... Um. Oh, I just got corrected that there's a 120% imperil on this LB. I stand correct. But his um his finishing moves a lot more his finishing rotation is a lot interesting because he can do a lot of damage as long as you can keep your team up with hundred percent dark assists. That's not really true. Um, on most turn, Vivi's finisher damage is pretty unimpressive. Uh, he bursts for around twenty eight billion, which is what Noctis does. Except Vivi is a mage, which is not great. On the on the quadcast turn, he does spike up higher. He goes up to around fifty eight billion, which is pretty he high. Except again, mage. So in practice, probably closer to what Sid is doing. So yeah, he only like if he has if he's on a five turn rotation, he he only quadcasts once in turn three, which which is really his detriment in everything. But in in turn, VV is also kind of like probably the most useful f uh, magic finisher we're ever gonna get. Period. And I, I disagree with that very strongly. I think that Roy Mustang is better despite all of his problems because Roy doesn't make you ge gear your team for resistance. And his damage is fairly similar. It's not really hard to gear your... Not even gear. It's, it's, you can literally take Dr. Iden or something and have a, a, external resists to dark damage. And I think Vivi has a... Vivi might be slower actually in his burst compared to Roy. I think that's probably his biggest. Roy's burst quicker. I think Roy's also, burst I forget off the top of my head, but I believe Vivi doesn't fit into chains. Like not all three, four? Not, not, not when quad casting. No, he does. He does. He does. Oh, okay. All four of them do. Yeah, all four of them are actually pretty close together. Yeah, it's it's really, really quick. So that's, I think for Dark Visions, Vivi is probably easier and better to use. Yeah, but the problem is he bursts really hard on turn three, and you want to finish the fight by turn two, right? <sighs> yeah, that's that's the issue. But if you need a magic finisher, like if, if the enemy is only taking magic damage, it's between VV and Roy. And I guess what I'm saying is that it's, it'll be easier for a lot of people to gear and prepare for VV than for it is Roy, because just because Roy is a limited time. And I, I really like VV just as a character. Too. Agreed. Yeah. I love VV as a character. He's one of my favorite characters, and I think he kind of follows the pattern that we've seen with Gumi not really buffing popular characters i mean just assuming you're gonna pull for nostalgia of cg terra cg onion knight or don't remind me all these units haven't really i mean vivi could have really used some buffs as far as his chaining was concerned because his chaining is pretty mediocre he does have three elements um that he can he can imperil and you know he's pretty solid that way but the finisher damage is must well said you have to have a dark resist buff on your team because it attacks everybody and he can only burst every so every like five turns in reality um the other thing about vv is that he i think he's also got some sort of i guess uh, some, uh, what's the word i keep uh, utility to it other than damage in in his um magic mitigation but it's really not worth mentioning but i just want to say it just just so that people stop shitting on vv well i'll mention it. it's it's fire ice dark and lightning 70 percent to all allies uh, elemental resistance and a 30 percent magic mitigation buff that he can quad cast with his ability quad cast mm -hmm. so it's definitely nice in a pinch um it does provide a little utility but it's not something that you're relying on for most yeah. content yeah it just really sucks because like ff9 really would have been a great banner if like vv was a slightly better and like if freya was just slightly better and if zadon was just slightly better like they, they, they didn't need a lot of changes but they didn't do them yeah but i mean you all know it 
there is they don't have to buff uh, the units that come from really popular titles that people are nostalgic because people are gonna pull on those anyway. Case in I I kind of I kind of disagree with that because what happened to Furion then? It, he comes from a game that nobody cares about. Jesus, Shadow. The no, 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 <laughs> but no. Okay, okay, okay. I, I was joking a little, but I'm also being serious because he does come from a game that isn't as popular. Okay. But look, look at Final Fantasy VI, look at Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy X. They have so many fans. They have a huge fan base. I mean, Hazard pulled for all three of them, knowing they are subpar. Cotton pulled for every FF6, so did I. Every FF6 unit that came out, they don't have to be good, right? I pulled for Terra knowing she was absolute ass. Okay, I didn't know she was going to get power crept by a free unit the week after. But, I mean, I would have still pulled for her. So they don't have to. All they, they they're, the GLEX units need to be really strong because then they get pulled for meta reasons because nobody's gonna pull for nostalgic reasons for a GLEX unit, right? Then what? Then that doesn't apply to Furion. Furion is from like one of the least known Final Fantasy games, and they didn't even give jack shit to him. I don't know. I just it... I, I I think I think they felt that Furion's TM and STM armored males pulled for him anyway. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, his bloodsword is kind of fun in a. Re no, but I I get what you're saying that they could have buffed him, but I think they're just going with the formula of not buffing protagonists that have CG uh, LBs. Yeah, maybe. I think is the banner overall, and I know we haven't gotten to Freya yet, but the banner overall was a banner of three STMRs that are kind of good but not great. So whales aren't really that interested in pulling. And it's basically just nostalgic people, but we just had FMA, which is basically a better sedan in almost every way. And as Muspel said, Schwen, who is a much tankier unit that can do just as much damage and also the evasion. I'm sorry, the the Mirage as well with its rotation. So, yeah, I mean, if you got Zidane, it's great. Like, he's a great unit. You can chain with Edward. You can chain with Zidane. Other Zidane, you can, you know, the, the, the Mirage is nice, but it's not a banner that's super enticing to people who aren't nostalgic for the game yeah, especially since it's a triple rainbow banner like that's of course ju just that is a hindrance to not pulling on this or stopping you from pulling on the banner but again perspective a lot of people pull, pulled for madam edel because they were going for gunning for that power i just want to say zidane does the same amount of damage and is a better unit if you have some stmr just saying zidane does less damage in less of the fight yeah he does less but not much less i think like shadow in, in your sheet he's very close right Oh, are you talking about whale build? Yeah. If you consider 33 and 31 close, sure. I think it was yeah. fairly close. But yeah, Zidane jumps from 22 billion to 31 billion, I think, with STMRs. Not too many, like, but he, he definitely benefits a lot versus other units. Yeah, it's just because his equipment selection with TMRs is pretty trash. Yep, the dagger thing is, is bad. So If you've got Zon STMR, though, it's pretty nice. So uh, should we so move the, on to Freya? Yeah, the next unit on the banner is Dragon Knight Freya, who is a jump finisher. Uh, I think this is... Uh, Alan still failing to learn the lesson that they learned with Sid, which is that if you make a TDH jumper, people are going to build them as TDW. Because again, when you look at, at least without STMRs, I haven't looked at the big at the whale builds, but the best build is still dual. Um, and Freya is, I'm going to say different than Sid in that Sid does a big burst every three turns. Freya has like smaller bursts, like every two or three turns with a huge burst every five or six turns depending on exactly how you set it up you can do it every five turns but if you're trying to optimize average damp you like sustain damage then you would do it every six turns i think because the the durations are a mess the rotation is a mess the burst though is incredibly high uh i believe it's around um let me double check here uh, 75 billion damage, just slightly under 76 actually, which is, Sid is at around 44 billion, some of the other more recent finishers have been in like the 50 billion ballpark, so this is like a 50% increase or so over the best units in the game right now. The problem is that 75 billion damage is still, it's similar to the burst that you'll get from most pairs of chainers, so unless you're two copies of Freya, you're really not really you're really not gaining any burst compared to chainers and the sustained damage is also not super impressive even if you're running a pair of her it's around across a 10 turn rotation you're looking at an average of about 23 billion which is around what zidane does except that you also have to give external chains and ideally an external imperil of at least 100 percent and it's just it's a lot of headache and then the gearing is a mess because you jump damage and tdw and a bunch of other stuff the, the kit just doesn't seem well thought out or well designed and freya isn't bad 
but I don't think this is a unit that people should be pulling for unless they really love FF9 and make bad decisions. Hmm. So Hazard made bad decisions. I mean, we we know this. <laughs> I had 15k Lapis and 33. With that, I got Zdane and I UOC'd the second copy of each one. And I also got a fourth Kaito, a second CG Dark Fina, and I think another unit somewhere in there. <laughs> so I, I feel pretty good about it overall. But yeah, it's because I'm nostalgic for that, and I really don't care about any unit for the next nine months that comes out, unless they really do rounds, of, which I think they're skipping. But um, yeah, I really don't care about any unit coming up in the next year. <laughs> so this is the last one for me. Yeah, but then it's an excellent investment still. You're going to enjoy your Zidane, right? No, I will. Yeah, and, and I think... I think they're good enough to use for all content, and that's fine. So I really can't complain. I wish they would have gotten more stuff, but honestly, they're they're mostly fine as is. If you enjoy the units, you can use them, you can pull for them, and, and complete all content. So overall, you know, a terrible triple banner, but nice units uh, and a great game. I just want to mention before we jump on that, um, so Freya's whale damage is really impressive if, if anybody's already seen it. But you have to realize that the assumption in the, on the whale sheet for Freya and even Noctis is kind of unreal for a lot of people. But she she has a, such a high ceiling that if you're planning to pull build a team around her just for Dark Visions, that might be like one fringe case where it's like justified to pull for Freya. Wait, for Dark Visions? But can she burst that hard on turn two? No. Not on, on turn three, yes. On turn two, no. Yeah. No, not on turn two. Turn three, yes, she can. But turn two, no. Yeah, so that, that, that's kind of the problem. We, we've been getting strong burst lately, but not that much on the turn one and twos that you actually want for the Dark Visions. So Roy is definitely actually good for Dark Visions for the Magic Bosses, because he can do that. Uh, Provided the bit fire is a good choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah true, true. The other issue is that like Sid's big burst is also at turn three, yeah, so it's like that doesn't really change for Freya. It's, no, it's but Sid is not that... going to be great for DV either. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. So if if um if big damage is what you want, you can technically build a toll team or hunter. You could probably OT have some weird ass OTK strats too. But yeah, other than that, it's a really horror unit to pull. Uh, so there's also the free unit from the Mog King event, which is Strange Gourmand Quina, uh, who's kind of like a support unit slash healer. You can use you can use him as either really. Uh, you could either go for healer with support or just pure support. So. The main skill, the most important one, I think, is Mighty Guard, which is it's it buffs defense, it buffs tight mitigation by 20%, or de defense and SPR, it buffs tight mitigation by 20%, and then it gives you a 3k barrier, and you can spam that every single turn. So that's, it's kind of re reminiscent of Sweet Luca, who the main thing that Sweet Luca could do in terms of defensive utility was spamming a 3k barrier every turn. So here we have a free unit that can do the same thing. Now, obviously, aside from that, Quina, Quina is missing a lot of what Sweet Luca had. Doesn't have the imbues, doesn't have the big imperils for the matching elements, uh, doesn't have uh, on-demand general mitigation, or uh, just just a lot of stuff is missing there compared to Sweet Luca. But as a budget support unit, if you have general mitigation handled by somebody else, then being able to spam that 3k barrier could make a big difference on some fights. Uh, Quina also has White Wind, which is Kiraja and then a big heal over time effect that's nearly as strong as Kiraja for the next couple turns. So if you're using him as a healer, you can use that and then use the 3k barrier skill on the other two turns. And then there's also a cooldown that gives a 5k barrier, which is pretty good. Yeah, we've got a, you know, it's another free unit that's pretty decent that can find a spot on a lot of people's teams. I think, I think he or she, because you know, we don't know Queen's actual gender, but um, is a little less useful than Kamari, who we just got a few weeks ago. Kamari's breaks that are really nice and that Mirage. But as Muspel was saying, if, if you want to use Queena as a kind of pseudo buffer healer, they're pretty good for that. And um, they do have a counter 40% mitigation, general mitigation that lasts for three turns. So I thought it'd be better to pair pair them with someone like Warrior of Light, who has a gap in their general mitigation coverage. But you definitely don't want the gap to be turn one because Queena can't do that turns to counter that counter. And it's not super reliable, but it is, I think, 40% chance to do it. It has to hit every once every three turns to full up time. Yeah, I think in practice, it's actually pretty consistent to have it up all the time as long as you're getting hit at least once every turn. I, I don't remember the math for statistics on uptime for that, but it should be pretty good. Also, can we talk about the fact that they didn't just name Queena 
Quina? Like, why is there a strange Gormand attached to it? There's no other version. They This is, like, I think the first time and they've done this. They've, they've done it for some of the other um, Mog King event use. Like, Garland got that. Yeah, but we have another Garland. Never mind, there, there was a three-star version of Garland. I forgot. Yeah. I think this is the first original unit we've gotten that has a special name attached to it. I never really thought of that. You're right. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Makes, makes sense. Maybe we're getting another Quina. Or maybe we were supposed to get another Quina and it got scrapped. I know we, get, we talked about Steiner as being the comic relief of Final Fantasy IX. I totally disagree. I think Quina is actually a good comic relief character. They have really funny lines. It generally lightens the story in a lot of ways. Definitely Steiner is more terrible. than Steiner. Steiner can just go for stuff. Also, <laughs> Quina can literally solo carry you through that game. Oh, like, they are so good in Final Fantasy IX. Like, Quina can just cook everything up, and he they will just carry you. So, yeah, Quina is definitely like, significantly better than any. Quina and Vivi are my favorites from FF9. It's kind of sad that Quina was a free unit, though. Yeah, but a good one. I mean, I still like the fact that they are doing this. I know we've said it on many episodes so far, every episode with an MK. It's so nice that they're giving new and casual players these units to shore up holes in their roster. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Plus, 200% bonus is always nice to have for free. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and this MK, the rates are significantly better than the Final Fantasy X MK. Uh, it wouldn't have been if you asked Dream, yeah, but he's not here. Yeah. He, he's a special case, I think, but they lowered it to three turns. The, my mm -hmm. biggest gripe with it is that Ico has so much auto cast every freaking turn that it feels like five turns anyway. Yeah. Did you seven star your Ico? Is that I one? had one previously, I ha and I seven starred another one because I've got seven of them. Oh, uh, yeah. I only have three of them, so I kept it at five star. Didn't want to waste material. Luckily, if they're level 101, they don't have the auto cast, so that's something. <laughs> <laughs> like never level your icos because auto cast units can just go die in a fire jeez they need to stop doing that there's another reason you shouldn't level your ico it's because both ico and beatrix got latents uh, announced this last week <laughs> icos were particularly not great uh, beatrix on the other hand had some really excellent 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 latents to the point where I think Gumi was so worried about it that they decided to pull both of them about 10 minutes before the banner uh, showed up. Now, there's been a lot of speculation on Reddit to the reason behind it. Um, I know Trag, our beloved ringleader, suggested that it might be an issue the double cast of Sword of the Clear Mind and Rose Finale. I think that's fairly unlikely because, number one, it didn't get fixed in P, so I doubt that it would have stopped everything to fix it in Global, but it could be the case. I think the more telling reason why I don't think that's actual reason they pulled it is because in the announcement where they said they're pulling it, they said, if we've, we might have to change the latents and we might do specifically refunds of any enhancement materials or OCs or what have you that anyone might have spent in anticipation, which suggests that they're going to make the unit worse. Otherwise, we wouldn't want that specific type of, in my opinion. I feel like that's reading a bit too much into the material. Um, like we've had refunds like in this in the past i'm not sure if it was latents specifically but we've had refunds of resources in the past specifically because there were, there were technical issues or something it came out yeah early. and i would say it's just reasonable to give a refund if you're just changing the unit because anyone that planned for the unit and did uocs or whatever did it mm -hmm. based on information that's Official just news. not true anymore right so it's of course I, I i would definitely i wouldn't read too much into the refund but i fully agree with you hazard I think it's likely that Gumi realized the level of power creep or the level of power Beatrix would have, especially with her finisher rotation. She would just blow everyone out of the water. And I think they just chose to back her. I also hope that the Gumi Spy, hey Gumi Spy, if you're listening to the podcast, I really hope you do. I love you. Sponsor us. Also, <laughs> please give Beatrix a full break on her cooldown ability. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes, I'm sure that they have postponed it to make her even stronger than she was announced. No, 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 like they can dump her damage, but just give a full break on her cooldown and she's going to be great. I think people misunderstand how powerful she was going to be. People are acting like she was going to like seriously outdamage Edward or be some major power creep. That's not she the case. She wasn't. She wasn't. No, her chaining damage was going to be about 26 billion under at least key parameters, which is far less than, you know, a few less than Adele and several less than <laughs> Edward. Her finisher damage was going to be significant more, but it was in the 50 billion range, and we just talked about Freya being 75 billion with the right setup, so, so it wasn't Freya like she was game-breaking. Beatrix does 50 billion like nearly every turn. A turn. 
Yeah. So yeah. It is it's, a bit different. Right. I, no. think, I think Beatrix would have been the best finisher in the game. Not the highest burst, she was. but the best overall. Because she could burst literally every turn after her cooldown, which no. never, we've never had before. Well, it's true. It was it was going to be maybe, what was it, a 20 or 25% increase in overall. So the thing about Beatrix was that, like, her... You, you're, it, so it, when I did my math, based on our, our own assumptions, she came out to, like, 27, 28 billion-ish without any will, without any STMRs, and with, with leaving one materia slot open. And then... Her finisher rotation was just absolutely crazy that I actually just brought it down because I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. This can't be real. So I, I brought it down hoping that nobody would see it. But obviously some people saw it and I saw the screenshots too. And sometimes I something I do feel is that maybe our own, we based our maths. So myself, Dream or whoever did maths, we based our maths on official news because we were always told that official news is the only reliable source. But clearly it's not. And I think that's their uh, biggest error this time around, is that they backed out on their own words saying that official news is the best source of news. So now nothing is safe until it's released and like a few hours later. And so I think that's, fair. that's well, something I, we need to get well, out of Well, I agree that this is a bit of a clusterfuck. Yeah. It's, a bit. It's, it's a bit promising to me that Gumi is actually showing some willingness to like try to balance the game. <laughs> I mean, this this isn't... They aren't being consistent about it because they did just release Edward, but... The fact that they're willing to risk that kind of shit show in the name of balance, I wish that they would do that more consistently. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah and I wish they would do it in both directions as well, so that some under underpowered units would also get some of these, so, some well-needed buffs. Well, technically, yeah. Beatrice was one of those underpowered units. That, that is actually true. That's actually true. Until... The fact that this is one of the only times that they've ever done this is frustrating. If they did it more often, I would be thrilled. I mean, they did it literally one year ago. <laughs> this feels like a repeat of the Esther incident in some ways, in the sense that, at least on its face, and we don't know for sure what the exact reason is, but on its face, it seemed like they realized a little too late that she was actually going to do more damage than they intended, either as a chain or a fin or a both, and they decided, let's uh, actually retool this or later, because we don't want to you know, mess up this power creep. That's one possibility. The other possibility is it was some technical issue, but I think looking at the way they re the announcement suggests it was not a technical, or at least not just a technical, but we'll see. But I, I think it's funny because last year they completely blamed the people who do data mining as to the fact that we shall data. And this time we relied on actual in-game news from Goom. And, uh, you know, and once we figured out what the numbers were excited about it, people will see it enhanced, and then they backed out of it. Yeah. But you, now, I hope they take this opportunity to fix I Yeah, I was just going to say uh, that. Because, you know what? That's a way to save the situation is to come back and, you know, make Beatrix still strong, but not crazy strong, and make Aiko really good. Like, she doesn't have to be top-tier healer, but, like, don't give her 20% extra summoning damage. Jesus! I don't think Yeah, it, we need we need at least 30% of something. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't think that uh Beatrix was actually totally out of the waters if we disregard her finisher chain uh finisher rotation. Like her chaining rotation was like probably going to be on par with whatever Glex unit they're going to throw at us in the next collaboration or something. Like so 20, 26 billion chaining damage is still super high. That would have made her what the strongest or second strongest non-limited physical chainer in the game. Yeah, and I'm just saying that we're probably at a power curve point where it's like they're going to start releasing other trainers at that power level. So I, I feel like it in like two or three weeks' time, we would have been like, oh yeah, Beatrix wasn't that crazy. It's just right right now in this current context. There is some logic behind it though, because, okay, Beatrix is from the same game that the new unit banner is from, right? So if Beatrix mm -hmm. was really powerful, it could have blown the nostalgia part of it out of the water for some people because they could still keep the nostalgia with Beatrix, who's still a loved character in the game, but also get a top tier unit. So I, I think they just saw a, a natural reason to back it because they see it cutting in, or they, they saw a risk of it cutting into their profits, is what I think. Hmm. I mean, yeah, even definitely. if they just delayed her by a couple weeks, she would probably be fit right back into the power creep anyway. I mean, it sounds like April's going to be kind of nuts, um, but I don't know. I, I think as a 26 billion damage dealer like okay it's a two-year-old unit it'd be really cool if she was somewhere near that when they do finally because i would love to use her um but i, I think the say, response a little much i also want to say for the record that this is apparently proof that what hazard said a while ago is true that Umi just doesn't do damage calculations for units when they're playing enhancements or anything they just look at modifiers and say yeah that looks good 
and then they don't double check anything they don't run it through a spreadsheet and then that's why we get these units that sometimes are way out of line i don't know i think i still i still can't believe i can't take the fact that any company can be that incompetent that doesn't make sense. I mean, they can literally take a copy of our sheet and input numbers into them, right? I think you have to keep in mind that Gumi isn't, or at least the branch of Gumi that handles FFBE, isn't really a developer per se. Like, they have they have some developers, but they're mostly localization. I, they definitely have designers on staff to do, like, the global exclusive enhance, enhancements and stuff, but it's not really, like, that's not their primary job. Yeah, that's true. And that's why I'm leaning towards that this really might just be a simple technical issue. Like... Gumi, as you mentioned, is their downfall's localization. It was never to develop anything. And recent in the last year or two, they've they've really hammered home that this is a different game from JP, and it really is. Like we have so many new new things here that by this point, this and JP are probably different. JP is probably an alpha or beta test site, if any. So I, I'm still open to the fact that this might just be a simple technical issue. But it, and um, but I'm also thinking that like maybe that's giving them too much benefit of the doubt in terms of their total incompetency. So I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know if they don't do damage calculation or not. I'm sure they have some sort of damage calculation, but maybe they've done it wrong because it seems twice, you know, twice in the last year, both at the beginning of April for Esther and Beatrix, it seems like, and we don't know, but it seems like they miscalculated how powerful the unit they were about to really going to be and decided to not do it. Uh, with Esther, they changed it 30 minutes before the banner came up. With Beatrix, they decided to just pull the banner until they fixed the quote-unquote issue, um, which I don't know what the issue is, but it seems like it was probably because Beatrix was going to do some pretty nice finishing damage and be a strong chainer at the same time. The thing is, um, you know what? You know what the worst thing is about this? Or worst thing is, um, we might never know the truth because if they just delay Beatrix banner until the end of the FF9 banner and then just release their latent as is, and just say, hey, we fixed the technical issue, everything is going to be fine, and they haven't cut in their profits. Oh, yeah, they could Gooby. totally lie about what the issue is just for PR sake. So we have no idea if we're ever actually going to find out what the issue is. If she gets nerfed, like if she gets lower <coughs> modifiers than we expect, if they could definitely disguise this as a technical issue and just <coughs> pay the power of play. Gumi, if you pay me 15,000 lapis a week, I will do the damage calculations for Listen, you. Listen, Gumi, if you pay me 10,000 lapis a week, I will do the damage calculations for you. Don't underbid by that much, damn it, Veros. <laughs> we have to go back and forth a little more. Listen, I need the lapis, Guys, okay? Guys, we, we need to unionize. We need to unionize yeah, this. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, okay. Gumi, if you give us each 10,000 lapis a week, Shadow will do the damage calculations for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... I think to close this off uh, is if anyone, if no one else has to talk uh, talk about this topic, I just want to say that like I we've we've had a whole year of none of this fuck up for a while, so I think this might just be a novel yeah, absolutely. case. Absolutely, and, and I want to say that like, let's say that they have done exceptionally well, and both comes to communication exactly. and stuff. And you know what? I still want to raise even if they nerf Beatrix, even if she gets to like still the respectable damage. Let's say she drops to Zidane level or whatever. I still think it's amazing. They're taking this beloved unit that has been underpowered and buffing it to par. All right, I, I still think that's. I good. mean, honestly, even even if she drops to like awakened onion knight levels, that's still pretty good. Granted, if we're about to come up on a huge power spike, that's maybe less appropriate. But we just got that for crimson like a week ago, so it's not like one week should make a huge difference for Beatrix, yeah. anyways. My issue with this is not the damage level because, as you said, if she's twenty billion or twenty six billion, I'll still enhance her either way. But and it's nice to have the usable, as long as she's viable. The, the problem for me was giving us in-game official news, telling us exactly what the modifiers were, yeah. and then saying, actually, we're not going to do that. I mean, and I people were very upset. I was upset. I know I, I called it a quit-worthy offense on Reddit and was downvoted to hell. But uh, I stand by that it was it was a major, major screw-up for I them to that do that. If, if they had screwed up and done anything and changed it without saying anything, that would be one thing. But they screwed up and were like, Hey, we screwed up. This is what we're gonna do. And if it makes, if if anybody based their decisions off of what we said in the first place, we'll we'll compensate you. So I think, as far as apologies and trying to make amends for mistakes goes, that's the best you can hope for. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, agree. I think they did the right thing by 
once they realize they messed up, I just wish they would have not messed up in such a public and hyping up way in the first place. Yeah, person. and you know what? Let's yeah, not give definitely. them shit for this because they have done some amazing things. Like, for instance, we actually see the modifiers and full details of the latents. Like, we couldn't have done this without actually having that. We wouldn't have known that that she would have been this powerful. So it is yeah. a misstep, but, but like, they're really doing stuff in the right direction. They're still trying. They're, we'll, we'll give yeah, them that. Yeah, absolutely. They're definitely absolutely. trying. Yeah, we know exactly how bad Aiko's going to be. For okay, yeah, Gumi, out. please, like, if you're listening, if you're listening, so also listen to the 10K la- Lapis thing. That's really important. But also, <laughs> please fix Aiko, because she deserves... I-, I used her as my healer for quite a while, like a, two years back or something. It'd be so cool. She was nice. Yeah, it would be so cool to use yeah. her again. Come on, Gumi. She was like the only usable summoner for a long time. So, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at her kit. Do you guys think the W ability would be enough? That would definitely be a big step. Uh, yeah, but, but I, I, she would need like one of the immunities that healers have, like either ailments or uh, yeah. or attack. Well, uh, yeah, well with, with with the latent that gives uh, that that was in the news that gives elemental resist, as long as that has a hundred percent uptime. If she also has W ability, then she can do that. She can keep up barriers on allies. She can do healing. She can fill the LB gauge. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I think she would. Like, she wouldn't be the best healer, but I think she would be pretty yeah, solid. she'd be serviceable. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, W ability might fix it. So, Gumi, did you take your notes? <laughs> yeah, just at least make the duration of the elemental buff the same as the... Hmm. Or, or make it just not a cooldown. Make it on demand. That would That's yeah. not overpowered. <laughs> Shally, in the last update video, uh, teased us with a collaboration, wink wink, and we had wild, we were going to do a wild speculation on that, and I think... This is a good good part good segue because we've already mentioned that April has always like last year April was a crazy power creep. It it was a big it wasn't a gradual power, but it was a step up. If we remember last year, Crimson came out and he was like the strongest unit for like a week, and then something happened, and that was April. And then we're no, we're now into that time of the year where Gumi decides always. And it wasn't just last year; the year before that, they released like Frivia enhancements. That made her into a fantastic DR chainer. And the year before that, they literally released Frivia and, and then Roberto a few weeks afterwards, who all uh, increased the power cap, uh, power, power creep a bit. So I think this month is another, we're going to be seeing another big power creep. Yeah, so but what do you think it is? What would it be? Is the question. Exactly. What would it right. be? So collaboration wise, there's, there's a few. The first thing to look at, I think, is the JP collabs that we haven't gotten yet. So there's a few that are out there. Uh, there's World of Final Fantasy. I don't think it's that. There's Romancing Saga 3. I don't think it's that. Uh, let's see. Did you just say Saga? Yeah, it's Saga. <laughs> saga. Even I know that. It's like English people saying pasta. It's like the worst thing ever. Uh, War of the Visions. <laughs> uh, I think that's pretty likely since it just came yeah. out. I don't know if you count that as a collab, though. Well, uh, probably. Semi. I mean... Um, yeah. It could be the Trials of Mana thing, because that's coming out. April I mean, couldn't it really? also be Advent Core? You mean Advent, Advent Children? Children? Whatever, like, Jesus Christ, I can't keep up with all the seven names. <laughs> so you combine them? That's that's just a mainline Final Fantasy game. Right, but then they've had a tendency to call all FF7 units collabs. Like, they, they've done they've that done with it. Cloud. Yeah, they've they've they done did. that with Tifa. They call I them I collabs. I don't watch the update videos, I just read Yeah, them wasn't Zach a so collab? At the, no? At the Fan Festa... At the Fan Festa in LA, whenever it was a long time ago, they announced Cloud Banner. And they, yeah, they I, it I was there, and it was such a disappointment. It's like when they said there's, collab. I yelled, I yelled out Rams the, enhancements when. <laughs> there's also the Sino Alice collab. I don't even know what that is. Sino Alice didn't even come out in GL yet, so that, I doubt that's going to be a thing. Okay. But so what? What happened is that Secret of Mana, the Trials of Mana collab happened today. The news was released in today for JP. So, as of the time of recording this, we now are we now know that JP is getting uh, uh, Trials of Mana. The only thing that I'm confused about is that we're probably not going to get this. Like, we haven't had... Um, I feel like it's going to be Final Fantasy VII Remake. Really? And that's the only... Yeah, I really think that's going to be the collab. I kind of feel it's definitely War of the Visions because it makes sense as it was just released. We, we've actually got a, a special guest appearing on the podcast who finally woke up. And I think he wants to chime in. Good morning. <laughs> Hello, I'm here. <laughs> it's, it's still an hour earlier than our normal start time for the record. And I don't think Cotton's going to be arriving because it's still 6.30 for her. Oh, yes, no. absolutely. <laughs> for, for this collab, a couple other options that hopefully you didn't go over before I joined is that it could be 
just cause because it's such a community <laughs> need. Yeah, yeah. That's I, I, very I, I, was, likely. I was about to bring it, that up. It would be it would be deserving of the special title at oh this point, gosh. I think. That would be hilarious though. And also a couple a couple other ones to notice is that just JP schedule wise, we're getting pretty close to the time that upgrades for Kingdom Hearts, Sephiroth and Riku as well as the first batch of Dragon Quest units are sort of due their upgrades. Oh my god. I don't really think it'll be either of those. But then there's also, I think they got a new Valkyrie profile collab. They did. Yes, That they started did. Mystic Cross for them. Mm-hmm. So that that's also an option. It's, it's kind of funny that Charlie in the video seemed to, to say it in a way that it would be obvious to everyone. She's like, oh, we have a very special collab. You guys all know what it's going to be. And literally and I, everyone on Reddit had a completely different idea of what it there could be. There are so be. many things it could be. Yeah. <laughs> and no I, that's idea. why I think it was FF7, because like FF7 is coming out next yeah. week. Or that's and... why, because Shally is a big FF7 fan, so I thought she yeah. must have meant that. Yeah, that's yeah what I, I think too. that might be the most likely. I mean, if it's coming out next week, but, then yeah, that does seem very likely. But also from a monetization but, standpoint, it also is like, so War of the Visions has been out for what, a week now? Two weeks? And now it's probably when a lot of the player base starts dropping out, like all the non uh, non fans. <laughs> so, so it would be the perfect time, you know, to ingest some new, or or inject some new life through this collab. So that's why I think that makes sense. But if F Seven is coming out next week, then yeah, I, I'm not even keeping track because I really don't care about remake, especially episodic ones. I think one thing that I want to add all to, um, add to this was the fact that um. Next week, so if we look at the five-star ticket schedule, and somebody else check this for me, every week that we get a quote-unquote five-star ticket, it's usually an MK or a wave battle event type deal. So this week was our MK, and two weeks from now we get another five-star ticket, as mentioned in the April 1st news. So based on that, we know that two weeks from now it's either another wave battle or an MK event. If that's the case, we know that in JP that the FF7 Avent Children uh, uh event was an mk so maybe that that's what they're referring to in two weeks we'll get an ff7 avent and children uh collab and, and it's a wave battle at like global so it seems like we get wave battles yeah so easter is an exactly one then, week, right? then again yeah yeah i think next week uh easter's like the 11th i think but i think i don't think wave battle actually uses the like same special five star summon as mod kings do i think it's purely for those in the wave battles usually just give a five star ex okay so i think it should be mod king on the 16th interesting mm-hmm. that's it a, a, yeah a couple of the collabs could also be mod king like i haven't checked what jp's trials of mana one is but like um the dragon quest ones have been mod kings man like mm-hmm. if they buff serena back to reasonable levels i'm gonna be so happy also if they just buff 11 as well or or veronica oof. so wait do you do you have serena yeah i have all the dragon quest units what the fuck you don't so you're you're saying that, that you pulled for you for a limited unit i mean okay listen <laughs> we, we got I, it boys i i uh, i i i mission accomplished I, 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 I missed last week's episode, but I wanted to say that I pulled on the of FMA Bender and got both El, uh, Elric Brothers STMRs, and I was successful in my endeavors. Oh my so. Yeah, we saw the screenshots. <sighs> Mega whale. Mega <laughs> yeah, but listen, I am now free to play. Like, I am not pulling. I am saving my lapis. <laughs> I am being a good boy. Okay, I'm spending my tickets, though. But you're still doing daily pulls. Why are you doing yeah. that? Yeah, okay, but, but okay, I can't stop cold turkey, okay? So so this is my way of kind of easing into it. Besides, one of those dailies gave me a Zidane, which made me super happy, okay? It's the first time I've shittered a unit in a long while now. Did you USC the second copy? No, I just want to wait until the banner is over. But then I am. I am going to USC the second copy. Oh, good. For Absolutely. No, no, no. I'm, I, like, I want to use a Dane because I don't want to deal with that shit of gearing Madame. Like, fuck that shit. I want to use a Dane and I just want to face roll trials. Yeah, I don't. I regret playing on uh, Madame Eadle. I do not because so. she's a wonderful you. character and who cares about the meta? You guys, come on. <laughs> who doesn't care about the meta? <laughs> Stop lying. <laughs> Especially Bustle <laughs> sitting here only pulling from meta units. <laughs> Oh, he, man. He's very consistent. Very consistent. Have you, the have only, you pulled for the any only non-meta unit I ever pulled for was Chow. And even then, he was still meta, but I pulled for him because an adorable dog. So you pulled on FMA because they were meta? Yeah. 
Yeah, but also you pulled on AI Katie, and I don't know if AI Katie was meta when you pulled for her. Her STMR was a meta. Her STMR was, although fuck that autocast. <laughs> but but was she? AI Katie is still meta. Yeah, that's kind of like dreams, mm. or that's kind of like Hazard saying that Knight Delita is still a functional unit. <laughs> no, AI Katie is great because she lets you fit in two tanks and a buffer. Because she handles breaks while tanking. She's fine. She's she's perfectly <laughs> serviceable unit. Just like Night Delita. <laughs> just like Night Delita, yeah. <laughs> just like Night Delita. <laughs> I suppose just like the meta can be whatever I want it to be. <laughs> exactly. He's the wiki. He is he the wiki. Is the raider. wiki ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like Muspel to like lose his shit at some point and just start screaming, I am the ratings! <laughs> <laughs> it's treason then. <laughs> uh, which, which makes me all the prouder that Dr. Aiden is finally getting bumped 0.5 this week after a final Yes, yes. Take. One clap. Like, we're also bumping Rivera because she heals just as well as him. Thank you. She does not. That is false information. You will be banned forthwith from this podcast. <laughs> Damn it! I, I love how I love how Sinzar went out of his way to create a YouTube video just to prove the fact that like, Aiden can heal. Did you see that? <laughs> I've watched. It's forty-five minutes long. He basically has the worst scorn of the moon run you could ever have, and he single heals it. Aiden and Aiden destroys everyone else's arguments. Sorry, myself. Wait, 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 wait! A forty-five-minute <laughs> moon run. I have a feeling that if he used an actual healer, it wouldn't take forty-five minutes. No, he, he got super unlucky and got like f- the fire apostle, and he was um, pee pee. Pee pee. He got it now over there's and the over mistake. Again. See, there's the mistake. Yeah. But now, shall, should we revisit Awakened Warrior of Light? <laughs> <laughs> hey, now that we've got Queena to make up that mitigation, he's top tier. Yes, yes, and everyone must have Queena, right? Unfortunately, she's limited, so. Thus okay. nobody hey, has you know what? Rap. I want to bring that up. I think that's a shame. Like they they have they have the excellent opportunity. So like the game still gives you an ash if you do the starting quest, right? And a lightning. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I but, but they have this excellent opportunity to to just give all new players that clear like the story successfully or something these limited units. That way, I think that they should put them in the daily coin shop for a lot of coins. Oh yeah, yeah, that's also an excellent point. Yes, because it, like, but but one one purchase only, of course, right? But I mean, why yeah. not? Like, because they are great units and they would help so many new players. Like, imagine as a new player just getting Gentiana, Quina, uh, Kimari. It's that's that's really good. Even like if they if they want people to worry about missing the event, do it on a delay. Like six months after the Mog King event, they get put in the daily coin shop. Yeah, maybe, maybe not and that seriously, long. But we, as I said a couple of podcasts, I haven't had or really missed those things. What? Like, do you really? Like we, we got. I really do. I mean, well, I, you know, because if you miss like the Rem dagger the first time, or, uh, the Kiyomori on the Orlando MK, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Although I'm not sure if we have anything super special that's still pending, if I can. Just out of curiosity, what's what's our next MK with the next free unit? Is it Kuja with FF7? Because I think ever since Queena, JP's free units got like significantly better. Oh, yeah, like, Machina's is super good. Yeah, Machina's is super good. Um, what's there, what? there was a magic tank that was released that was really good. Oh, Light, F- lightning, lightning, yeah, save your lightning or whatever it was. Wait, and no. then is that like JP's Kuja. third magic tank ever? <laughs> Kuja Fourth, obviously was really good, and I think Fenrir Edel was also. Wait, Kuja like Final Fantasy Nine Kuja? What are you talking about? No, no seven. Final, no, not Kuja. Oh, Kadash, Kadash, that's yeah. the one. Oh, sorry. I was like, what <laughs> <That's>... are you? <laughs> I was like, yeah. Kuja's really good, but I'm pretty sure he's not free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you see Sinzar? He got like four level or garlands. seven star garlands <laughs> before Kuja. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm looking at the wiki right now. The next which I which units here are eventual. Uh, I think we're getting Ishtola next. Ishtola. Oh, Ishtola. Oh, right. Yeah. And then after that, Ishtola or Kadash, after that, they, they have, it says Seaside Nicole. I don't know if he was from Mog King event. We already have a different version in GL, so it's not him. Then there's John Pinion. Pinion. Oh, yeah, that was from like a weird story event, I think. It's then, pretty. Then, then Popstar Katie, we already have her. Then Miradel. And then Kadage, and then Lightning, and then Quistus. So, so just as we're on the topic, how good is Savior Lightning? Uh, I think she's probably on par with or better than Charlotte. What the heck? That's not bad. She ha- the the main thing is that she has W ability and she can dual cast, provoke, and cover, which is a huge help for people that don't have passive provoke gear. Yeah, 
that's, she, that's the biggest got, thing. She's got the 50% mitigation CD. For new players, it's going to be an incredible time to start. And, like, I, I just want to bring this up because, like, Queen is probably the last one where we'll, where we'll be like, eh, it's good for beginners and uh, new players, but it's nothing really special. But I think later on, we're going to get units that even, like, you know, people with, with uh, that have played for a long time would probably want to have just just in case. Yeah. 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 I'd, I'd say most of, like, the damage dealer ones are obviously going to be, like, a noticeable bit below that top middle level, but they'll still be very usable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the mock Machina, the free Machina looks pretty good too. Yeah, he's he's one of the best ones I'd say, along with Lightning. Very good breaker. Isn't so bad either. I... I haven't actually looked at what she's got Great, recently. That's what she has. Yeah. No, yeah, I remembered that much. So it's, it's her defining characteristic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, I think new players have such your time than you start this game. You get some really oh, nice yeah. characters. You get so, so many Moogles all the time. I have like thirty thousand percent in moogles have no idea what to do with whereas before you had to farm every single one for months new players have a great yeah. great time in ffpe if you want to be a new player and you know what i actually have been trying out some different gachas lately just just you know to not to play them seriously but just try them out for two days and see how they work and many of them have been long running gachas and compared to ffbe like the power you get by just starting ffbe is incredible compared to many of the gachas out there. Yeah, and I will say, you know, even though I just said that I'm basically looking forward to nothing the next nine months, this game is still really fun for me, and I really enjoy it, and I think they're doing a great job in a lot of ways. And uh, I think, you know, that's a testament how many people in the community are still active. It's been a really nice game so far, and I hope it continues. Yeah, mm -hmm. agreed, agreed. And with that, I think we're going to wrap up the podcast for today. I do want to mention that we have started our own Discord channel specifically for the podcast. Um, you guys can come on and discuss different things that we say, argue with us, give us suggestions, feedback, uh, new ideas, ask questions. So we're going to have a link in the Reddit post that I'll post up when this episode releases, as well as a link in the YouTube description on our YouTube page. So look forward to that. And uh, you can come harass us directly for our bad opinions. So Thank you guys again for listening. Ten episodes. This has been a really fun so far, and we are planning to continue. We've also got a lot of really cool guests that are coming soon, TM. I promise we do have more guests coming. Um, there's been some scheduling issues with these many games, but uh, we're looking forward to having more opinions, more voices on the podcast. And thank you guys once again for your support. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Also, if you come into the Discord and say that FF12 sucks, we will mod you. Welcome in. <laughs> no, we Insta won't. I'll take, I'll take away Barrows' problem. Or powers to do that. <laughs> take away my problems, please, Mosfil. I have so many. <laughs> <laughs>